proud to be a hero. I know what you're thinking. Hey, Vic, this is the 55th episode. Is that Clint Thomas right there? Well, I'll answer those questions by saying, yeah, buddy! Welcome to this week's edition of the Comic Hero Show. I'm your host, Victor Nelly, and I am the Comic Hero. That's right, folks. This is the 55th episode. We're here at Clint's Comics. I'm telling you, I am very pumped about doing this episode. I, I, I don't know what it is, but I just, it's just something about doing it today, this week. I just feel awesome. Alright, so I gotta ask. Any questions? This first question comes from Brian Ferguson from Wake Forest, North Carolina, who I went to high school with. He asked, what is the most ridiculous superpower and why? Well, I'll just go ahead and say it. The most ridiculous superpower comes from a former member of the X-Men named Maggot. Now his superpower is that two slugs come out, out of his stomach and eat stuff, they enter right back in. Yeah, um, not a very good superpower. And not only that, he's, he was also one of the worst comic book characters ever. And I mean, ever. But anyway, that. And I'm not going to repeat that because I think I just grossed out two people. Um, <laughs> all right. Oh, by the way, I have three questions this week for the uh, any questions. Like the next question is from Melody Meshel from Shreveport, Louisiana. And I was in, um, I was in bounds with her husband at ULM. She asked, who do you think is the weakest female supervillain and why? Well, I did some research and I found out there used to be a character in the Marvel Universe named Asbestos Girl. Maybe asbestos lady, rather. She didn't really have any powers. She just had a costume. The form of water. What if the powers activate? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right, Clint. The, uh, that, that, that too. But that's, that's I, I think... That would be ridiculous for me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, shape of an eagle, form of water. Oh, by the way, for all y'all don't know, the Wonder Twins are not are not original um, superheroes. They're actually created by Hanna-Barbera back in 1977 for the, uh, the Super Prince cartoon that came on back then. And they were so bad that Hanna-Barbera did away with them after one year, but then there were a whole bunch of a whole bunch of folks who were a little upset about that, so they brought them back in 1979. And they lasted all the way through 1985, and then Hanna-Barbera did away with them for good. But anyway, there was, I did some, re, did some research, and there was a, uh, a supervillain named uh, Asbestos Lady. She did not have any powers. She had a costume made out of asbestos. And the, and the sad part is she didn't last very long because guess what? She died of cancer. 
it was a correct run card. <laughs> Who knew? <laughs> All right, the last question comes from Catherine Evans from Shreveport. She asks, have you, read, have you read Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles number 44? If so, what did you think? I'm still upset. Well, Catherine, I don't normally read TMNT, but um, from my understanding, there was a death. And, and um, in my understanding, Donatello died. Yeah, that's right. Donatello died in Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles number 44. It is. And I, I tell you, um, come on, this is this is like all four of them, not just Donatello, but Leonardo, Michelangelo, and Raphael were created by by East Middle Air back in 1984. They may be just um, known as cartoon characters by most folks, but they were comic book characters as first. Uh, uh, first, I mean, come on, what the heck are you doing? In my view, TMNT is comic book royalty. I don't know what these characters come up with. You can't just kill one member, much less all four of them. Well, anyway. All right, up next is, that's it for any questions. Up next is comically speaking. So without further ado, let's talk. Okay, I'm only going to talk about one thing in the comic book speaking segment this week, and that's uh, Secret Wars that's going on in Marvel. Uh, right now they're doing, uh, and this is mainly in all the Avengers books, but they're doing uh, a lot of prelude to the Secret Wars. And now uh, Secret Wars is an event where just about every every Marvel universe dies, and all there all there is is the Battle World, where every character is. Where every character is on there, and they're pretty much fighting it out. Um, I don't know what what it, I don't know if there's going to be a new Marvel that's going to that's going to be forming or not. But I'm kind of excited about it because I, I kind of like the idea of of one Captain America going up against another one, or one or one or just about all the Thors. Every character who's ever been Thor. Go up against each other. I mean, it just doesn't get any better than that, folks. Um, I will be reading Secret Wars. Um, there's also going to be a, a book that's going to uh, be, that's going to spawn out of that. That's called A Force. Now, what A Force is? It it involves every female character in the Marvel universe. So. By by the name being called Air Force, you, I mean it's a dead giveaway that it's a it's basically a a, a team of female Avengers. Now I'm not when it comes to comics, I'm not an equal opportunist. Far from that. I mean, heck, I I read Wonder Woman, I read Captain Marvel, I read Spider Woman, and I read Silk. But. Uh, and then also there's going to be another uh, Spider Spider Verse is coming back, folks. Yeah, just when you thought that we that that it was over after in the pages of Amazing Spider Man, it's back. And wow, you know what? I am I'm definitely going to be on top of that. And I and and next week I'll I'll talk more about uh, Secret Wars. But I just wanted to um, let you know about it. And but it, it's mainly going to be. But with Secret, with Secret Wars happening, two issues, or two books, Avengers, well actually three books, Avengers, New Avengers, and Avengers World are ending. Um, that's it for comically speaking. So then, let's get to the comics I bought this week. Comic books I bought this week. Alright, first up is Uncanny X-Men number 32. Now, some of the things that's been going on with this book is recently uh, She-Hulk came over to the Jean Grey school and, and read the uh, Last Will and Testament of Professor X. 
and, and he found out that one of the that he actually found a mutant somewhere in Newberry, South Carolina, and he had his mutant powers were so dangerous to the point where he had to uh, he had to depower. And uh, which you know, a lot of his students considered to be a cardinal sin. But then, uh, but they it was also written in the will that if his powers ever resurfaced, that the uh, that, that three X Men of his choosing, which was Cyclops, Wolverine, and Storm, had to had to um, travel to Newberry, South Carolina, to stop him and put him down. Well, this kid, well, well, man rather. Besides, his powers all of a sudden resurfaced and he killed everybody in Newberry, South Carolina except himself. And a lot of other stuff that's been going on. I'm still a little behind on this book, but I will let you know what happens once I get up to speed. Alright, up next are three books, three issues of the same of the same book. And that book is Aquaman. And uh, first up is Aquaman number 38. Oh, that was the, uh, this is the a variant Flash 75th anniversary cover that DC was doing two months ago. And Aquaman number 39, this is a, uh, a variant Harley Quinn cover that DC were doing in most of their books last month. And Aquaman number 40, this, this is a parody. A movie poster variant covered. Of course, we all know what movie this this is a parody of. Free Willy. And what's been going on is Aquaman has recently found out that his his mother, who had thought to be dead, was actually alive. But the reunion is it is as uh, is as happy as you think it think it was. As a matter of fact, she tries to kill Aquaman. Yeah. All right, up next is New Avengers number 32. Now, this is a prelude issue to the uh, Secret Wars that's going to be starting in a few months for Marvel. And uh, a lot of the a lot of the sins of the of the new of the Illuminati Avengers have come to light and uh, just total mayhem. All right, up next is Flash number 40. I don't know exactly what the uh, what this is a what this variant cover is a parody of, but what I can tell you is that the, um, in the book, the Flash from the future comes to the present and decides to uh, fight crime authority style. Now, what I mean by authority style, for all those who are familiar with the uh, superhero team, the Authority, they were um, there are these superheroes that print, that practically kill, and that's what. And that's what the Flash from the future is doing. Well, the Flash of the Flash from the present is trapped inside the Speed Force, and with with no way out. But this is the uh, the last issue before Conver convergence starts next month. All right, up next is Batman and Robin number forty. Now, we all know what this is a variant cover. Uh, uh, this is actually uh, this is a, a parody of Harry Potter. Go figure. But what's been going on in this book is Batman has been dealing with Robin having to, you know, having not only being resurrected but having superpowers to go along with it. And he is, and, and he is on pins and needles, not because of this, but because of the fact that he could be recruited by the Justice League. Because if there's one thing that Batman has always been against, it's been against a side, any sidekick that, that he has ever had become a member of the Justice League. Besides, that's dear old, that's, that's, he, he's trying to be a dad. The, the best we, I mean, he has been, he's been a father figure to Dick Grayson, uh, Jason Todd, Tim Drake. But to be an actual father, eh, Touch and go. All right. Up next is Guardians of the Galaxy number twenty-four. This is uh, chapter seven of the Black Vortex um, story arc that's going on, and uh, I'm still a little behind on it. As a matter of fact, I haven't even started on it. I mean, I'm, there's other books that I'm that I'm reading. And then, lastly, 
Nova number 28. This is chapter 8 of the, the Black Vortex story. Now, I'm, caught, I'm up to speed with, Norm, with Nova. Nova has, has um, damaged his helmet to the point where it, it half works. And, he, and, and if, that's, if that's not bad enough, he has been going up against Carnage. That's right, Cletus Cassidy himself. And I thought he was reformed, but no, he is up to no good. And up to his, his sick, twisted, uh, his sick, twisted ways. But don't worry, Nova stopped him. Oh, and he's back. He's back at Carefree Junior High after after initially being uh, expelled from that school. Okay, that is. Uh oh, sorry, folks. <laughs> That is one, two, three, four, five, six, six. That is not up on, which brings the total number of comics that I've bought since December of 1997 to 6,719. Well, I hope you enjoyed this week's episode. Um, this is episode 55, and I tell you, I, I, I just, I, I keep saying this a lot, but I just, you know, have so much joy, you know, sharing my love of comics with y'all, and and I just love doing it here at Clint's because, you know, I get to involve other people, and I, I, I tell you, um, I mean, I just think I, it's, it's just going to keep getting better, y'all. I, I just know it. Uh, oh, by the way, I, if you like these comic hero T-shirts that I make. Well, guess what? I'm actually making them for others, but I'm doing it for a fee. Um, the prices for uh, making the shirts are ten dollars and a blank <coughs> tee. Or if you just want me to buy a shirt, then it's twelve dollars. Now for children, it's it's five dollars and a blank tee. But if you want me to buy the, the tee, then it's seven dollars. And so far, I've had about four or five customers um, buy tees from me. And um, well. And they, they love them. And oh, and by the way, if, if I ever, if, if you ever ask me to make a shirt for you, and you get it, take a picture of it and, and, and text it to me, or or post it on Facebook or anything. If you're if you're on Facebook or or if you're on Meet Me, do the same thing. If you're on Twitter, do the same thing. Because I because that, as you can as you can see down at the bottom of the screen, I am on all. All right. Now, the only reason I wear this white shirt is because. Um, I'm going to I'm going to the ULM Vermont game a little later on this evening and um, go Warhawks <laughs> and it's it's a whiteout game so that's why that's why we're in a white shirt but anyway I'm Victor Nunley I'm the comic hero we'll see you next week here at Clint's Comics till then be safe be blessed be a hero.